What's up guys, today is an exciting day. We're working on the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quattrofolio. Absolutely stunning, amazing car. In fact, it is as fast as a 991 GT3 on Nuremberg. You should go look it up, which is frightening. That's how crazy this car is. So on today's episode, we're gonna be talking about how to polish a new car. Um, and typically you guys know me, I don't wanna polish a new car, but if it needs it, then you should do it. So in this case, it does. Then we're going to put a clear bra on the front here. And then more importantly, we're gonna put reflex on the entire car, including the clear bra. So put that to the side, we're gonna talk about that throughout the video. Here's an interesting backstory on this car. This car came from DC, Washington DC, all the way up to Connecticut. And it drove through a nor'easter, you know, rain, sleet, snow, all that kind of mixed together. And so the gentleman who owns it, very nice man, decided to put masking tape here on the bumper and hockey tape, type of hockey tape, I guess, on the hood. Now, I don't necessarily blame him because that makes sense. You don't want to get rock chips right before you put a clear bra on. But on the hood, I will show you some interesting things have happened because of the glue and I think because of the rain. Um, so, I, you know, as always, I'm going to call Kevin Brown because he seems to have all the answers. And uh, I'm sure he'll have something to say about this. This is carbon fiber. So the hood is carbon fiber, the roof is carbon fiber, and the drive shaft is carbon fiber. So I think the glue did some funky things and we're going to take it out uh, with the polish. So this is... This is on the spot. I didn't think we we're going to be doing this particular you know, part today. So anyways, that and a lot more coming up on this episode of Drive and Protect. Way in so that they sit on top of each other. Oh. Touch up paint on. I can hear it. All right, first test drive in the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quattrofolio, and I'm sure I'm messing up that pronunciation. Off the, off the bat, I have to say the seat is absolutely incredible. It's really, really stiff. It kind of gives me that feel of a, um, sort of like a racing seat, a Sparco, a Recaro, that kind of thing. But at the same time, it's really luxurious and it's just comfy, but it's, it's firm. I don't know how to explain that the right way. It's sort of like somebody having a fist in your back, but like in a comfortable way. I know that sounds horrible. Next thing I see is the steering wheel is, is beautiful and it's got Alcantara in the right spots. Now I'm a huge fan of Alcantara uh, and it's got a mix of Alcantara and leather. Uh, I prefer all Alcantara, but this is a, a wonderful mix. The next thing you see is the shifter paddles. I'm obsessed with shifter paddles, F1 paddle, whatever you want to call it, e-gear, and they have to be affixed to the, um, to the steering wheel uh, center, center piece here, not the actual steering wheel. So if I turn the wheel, right, it doesn't go along with the, the steering wheel. I, I don't like that aspect. This is actually affixed um, to the column is what I was looking for. So I really dig that, plus they're massive. So if you're in a turn and you're spinning the wheel, you always know where up is and you always know where down is. Uh, so that's, that's a big deal for me. In terms of the handling, right now it's uh, really not so nice out. It, uh, it sleeted, it rained, it snowed last night, kind of a funky little mix. So clearly I can't do anything and I'm in uh, the non-sport mode because this is not my car and there's only a couple of them in the US and I'd like to deliver this back to the guy. Freshly detailed. Uh, and with a clear bra on, but I have permission to drive it, so I'm certainly going to drive it. Look at this, I just went over a snowbank in it. And we're sliding. Woo, baby! It says, <laughs> it just popped up. Possible ice and snow. Well, that's a good, that's good. I'm glad it let me know that. Overall, uh, from what I've read and, and what I've so far seen with this car, it's pretty spectacular. Put it in perspective, you guys know I'm a big uh, Porsche person. The, the 991 GT3, uh, we can all agree, is a pretty incredible car. It runs about the same time as this car on the Nuremberg Ring, which is mental bonkers. This is a four-door car. I mean, you could stick your kids in this thing. So Alpha did an amazing job. Uh, overall, the fit and finish, I think, is absolutely spectacular. So on to detailing, putting a clear bra, and then uh, reflexing the car. First, the masking and hockey tape needed to be carefully removed. The hockey type tape left behind some residue from the glue that would later be removed with a healthy wash and a pressure washer. Next, I powered up the old pressure washer and turned on the burner for warm water as it was about 25 to 30 degrees when we started this initial cleaning. Next, I pre-rinsed the paint and wheels to remove caked on clumps of snow then mixed foam and boost in a foam cannon to dissolve any persistent salt. While waiting a minute or two for the boost to do its job, 
I began cleaning the beautiful rims with a soap mixture of Brute and Boost. After another warm bath, it was time to bring her indoors and assess the paint. Once I looked at the paint under proper lighting, I discovered the tape had inadvertently caused vertical lines in the hood. To me, this is when detailing jobs become interesting, and it was about time to make a quick phone call. Now, earlier in the day, I called Kevin Brown and sort of described the situation to him, and he was on the phone helping somebody else, and he said, let me think about it and try to figure out what's going on in the paint. So I'm gonna call him back right now, live on the actual show, and I'll take my microphone and uh, hear what he has to say. Let's hope he picks up. Hello, Kevin. Hey, Kevin, it's Larry. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How's things going on that car? It's 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 going okay. I'm dying to hear, uh, you know, the explanation. And uh, we're live right now on the show. So say hi to everybody. Oh, great. Well, well, hello, and thanks for having me on. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, you told me the tape was applied to the vehicle to yeah. transport it, and and yeah. uh, it sounds like you used a pretty strong tape. And the thing about tape is, you know, it has an ability to uh, restrict or limit expansion and contraction of a paint surface. So if it's very strong tape, it's going to limit it more so than one that's twisty and soft and flexible. So in this case, you've got carbon fiber, you've got composite bumper, you've got very strong tape, and and it makes sense that the tape restricted the ability for the, the paint to expand and contract without restriction. So it imprinted it. So your job is basically try to restructure that or reform it. Uh, Easy way to do that, you can try to heat it and cool it repeatedly through, you know, uh, lights or, or, or heat, just heat, um, or you can polish it. And I would start out with a very soft pad. You're not trying to really take away scratches or anything, so you're just polishing to create some heat and push the surface around a bit, let it expand and move around, and come back to rest the way it was originally painted. So um, that's what I would do, and I think that's what happened. I don't think you need to remove a lot of paint. Um, in your case, you're kind of on a limited time frame, so you don't have the, the benefit of doing lots of expansion and contraction. You've got to get the job done so it can get filmed. Is that correct? You're putting a protective film on it? Right, right. So I'm trying to, I guess, you know, heat it up a little bit and, and sort of help it flow, I guess, is the unless, you know, you tell yeah. me otherwise. You're going to let it, let it open up and let it hopefully come back to rest the way it was originally uh, resting before the tape was applied. You, know, you should have pretty good success. Well, that was pretty cool. So that's the explanation of why the paint did what it did. Armed with this knowledge, my goal was to heat up the paint by compounding and polishing. What's interesting is there were no scratches or hazing that needed to be removed. However, as we know, the actual act of compounding alone generates a byproduct of heat, which, as detailers, we try to minimize in order to avoid burning the paint. But in this case, I'm actually looking to generate heat slowly and carefully to reflow the clear coat. Pretty cool. With the detailing principle of least aggressive method first, especially when you can't measure the paint depth, I started out with M205 polish and a microfiber cutting pad, quite frankly because I'm comfortable with this combination. After a few quick passes, the temp rose to 80.6 degrees Fahrenheit, but little to no reflow effect occurred. Next up, we used M105, which is a type of compound, and a microfiber cutting pad. The temperature rose to 87.3. This was showing signs of enough temperature to begin reflowing the paint. So at this point, instead of using a stronger compound, we instead did what's called a half step in detailing, which is to run the product a bit longer and slightly increase the downward pressure to get a temp of almost 95 degrees, all while using the same product. This was doing the trick, but taking a long time, so I wondered if I could go another half step using a stronger pad in terms of the heat generation, yet a more lubricated liquid, as in M205. Okay, so we have a little bit of an update here. So we've been using the 205 with the microfiber cutting disc, and then on the high spots using 105 with the microfiber cutting disc. Again, different heat, and then we said, okay, maybe let's, let's try something else. This is the whole thing about de being a detailer. You're kind of like mixing everything all the time. This is an extra cut disc. What does that mean? There's less foam. When there's less foam, you actually transfer more of the power of the machine to the paint. That's a good thing in most cases, but in this case, 
it's a good thing slash bad thing because like I said, we're flying blind. So I don't know how much clear coat is on this car and it's a little dangerous. It's a little, it's, it's a new car. So this is, you know, you gotta be very careful, but it seems to be working. So we're using 205 slow speed and an extra cut disc. You see how we started from very, not very aggressive and getting a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. You have to take that time, that slow process. If you just hop right in, you can make a mistake, bang, you're through the paint and your week, your month, your year is over because you have to repaint a brand new car that there's only like 10 of in the country or whatever. So this is where we are right now and it's working uh, pretty well. So let's finish this and now get the clear bra on. Once finished, the paint looked much, much better. The goal was to reflow the lines on the hood so that the natural honeycomb type texture would be consistent across the carbon fiber. Was it perfect? No, but my experience in my gut told me this is where I needed to stop to avoid the dreaded detailing dilemma. Next, to give myself a bit of a mental break, I focused on preparing the car for the bra. One of my favorite functional aspects of the Julia is the retractable front spoiler. Despite not being able to manually lower it yourself on the dashboard, it does, however, automatically deploy at speed and retract before parking, which can save you the heart-stopping crunch we've all unfortunately experienced. There are two 16mm bolts holding the spoiler in place, and I removed them so that we could get access to the inner part of the lip while clear bra -ing. After my little break, the B-pillars were polished because they were totally swirled out. For this, M205 in a 3-inch yellow Rupes pad was used, then a white Rupes pad with one drop of M205 to finish off. Now we've spent about six or seven hours polishing the paint. As you can see, it looks pretty ridiculous. I'm excited. Now the next step is going to be to put reflex on it and we're going to put reflex on the clear bra once we're done with it. We have a couple hours still left with that. So we're going to deal with the paint. Before we do that, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about ISO, isopropyl alcohol, and there's, you know, everybody talks about it on the forums. So let me give you a sort of general guideline or, or baseline for you to, to work with. This particular one is 91% isopropyl alcohol. You're going to mix that with water in your spray bottle. Now the ratio, and again, this is a little bit broad. The ratio is going to be about 30% to 70. So 70, 30 to water, 60, 40 is okay. Now, if you use 70% isopropyl alcohol, generally speaking, it's a 50 to 50 ratio. Now, why do we do that? I just finished polishing the paint. It's full of oils and it's, you know, I did it 15 minutes ago. So the idea is to spray this on, wipe it down with a microfiber towel, just in light, nice and easy, no scratching. And that's going to remove any of the residual oils from the polish. And it's not going to fight with the reflex. Now, if I haven't, if I didn't polish the paint and I'm just applying reflex, you don't necessarily need it, but it's never a bad idea. So I want to preface that when we're done, we're going to put reflex on there. We should be good to go. When applying reflex, I use a cross hatch pattern to ensure every angle is met, but avoid circles as much as possible. One to two minutes after application, the paint will look similar to this as reflex cures. Then simply use a microfiber towel to remove. No heat lamps, gas masks, or hazmat suits required. I recommend adding a second coat of reflex, then waiting a few hours and topping it off with ammo skin as we did in this case. Then I quickly polished out the exhaust tips, dressed the tires, cleaned the engine bay, and so on before it headed back to DC. All right, well, we finished up and the car looks absolutely nuts. And I have to say, you know, I, I read about this car, I looked at it, and it is as cool uh, as you're reading, you know, because sometimes you read and you're like, oh, okay, maybe this, this car is bananas in person. It sounds great. Uh, it feels great. I don't know how to describe it. The doors close really well. That's a big thing for me. It feels solid, yet they're actually kind of light. It's, 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 it, it's kind of mind boggling. And, and uh, you know, Google search or Wikipedia or whatever, the Nuremberg ring and see where this um, you know, comes out in terms of times and remember it's destroying Koenigsegg's put, I mean, that's pretty crazy. I'm not necessarily destroying them, but if you're beating a Koenigsegg, that's pretty cool. Anyways, uh, the point of the video, you get a new car, whether it's this one or anything in between, in theory, you should not have to polish the paint. That's in theory. Uh, so I, I don't want anyone to think, Hey, you get a new car and you have to polish it. This was a weird thing with the tape on it. The fact that it was driven up here, who knows how long it was before. Uh, you know, the, the, the owner took it, it may have been on the, the showroom floor. I mean, this is kind of a special car, so people are touching and rubbing it. So we needed to polish it. Um, but you shouldn't have to all the time. That's why you tell the dealership, do not 
touch my car. Leave the plastic on. Don't look at it. Don't breathe on it. Don't think about it. Don't do anything to it. Just give it to me and then you can wash it properly and start the right uh, routine or regimen. So anyways, that's kind of my uh, soapbox little conversation. Once you're ready, you can put reflex on. I put mud on the tires, cleaned up the engine, vacuum. The whole thing in the car looks perfect. Now it's ready to go out um, and it, of course has a bra on it. And, uh, and fight the roads uh, for the rest of its life. Anyways, if you have any questions, shoot me an email at larry at ammonyc.com or visit my website, ammonyc.com for more how-to car care videos. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.